ASMR. Cheers. Today I will play a game of online chess using my digital board to communicate with chess.com. In this video I will only show the physical board and not overlay uh, any of the chess.com graphics. Let me know in the comments if you prefer it this way. So there was a bit uh, of a mishap there in the beginning of the game. So I lost a little bit of time. But that is not a problem. We will just uh, make up for it with some quick moves here. And we are playing 15 minutes versus 15 minutes. Uh, with an additional um, five seconds every move. Oh, it's ten seconds every move. So at this point, we are in the opening phase of the game. This is one of the main lines. And our esteemed opponent chose to castle, queen c2, so how cool is that, playing against somebody from somewhere else in the world, over the internet, on chess.com, but using a physical chess set. They play c6 to go into sort of a slav kind of game. I believe bishop d3, bishop d3, bishop d3, bishop d3, bishop d3. Okay, my opponent seems to know their stuff. Um, so, how do we develop from here? How about just castling? Um, looks like so since that this is the first time I'm trying this out there could be small kinks we have to work out like this castling thing here um, can I play pawn to e4 That would be pretty cool if that works. In order to open up this bishop, they will probably have to take the knight takes. Okay, they take like this. That's okay. We just recapture and now. They will probably play pawn to b5, bishop back to d3. We then want to play pawn to e5, chase away this knight, and slice the board in half using these two pawns um, on the dark squares, trying to limit our opponent to this side of the, the board so that they can't enter this side of the board, this triangle here, so we can attack the king. And they can't get back. That is what we are hoping for. And it looks like we are getting somewhere, at least. Um, okay, so now it could be time to stop and think a little bit. Um, this knight is maybe going here to fork these two guys. We could stop that with a move like a3, 
that's a bit slow though um, uh, and allows our opponent to try maybe and break with pawn to c5 push this pawn forward um, then we could consider capturing this knight then we would probably see pawn takes pawn on c6 takes um, we could also consider bishop check king h8 knight knight e4 if king takes bishop knight f6 double check king moves queen h7 checkmate so that looks pretty good but bishop check king moves knight here then knight b4 do so you know what I like this idea I think we'll just go for it okay and then king here and then we were thinking about knight here so what's the situation opponent has spent basically no time at all um, we have more than 10 minutes left and uh, we have entered some ridiculous sacrificial uh, attack uh, that I feel is not really good um, I think maybe a move like pawn to d6 could uh, spell disaster for us um, but we do get a lot of play here uh, for instance pawn to g6 then bishop takes the pawn on h6 so and our opponent is in the tank a little bit so um yeah we are catching up on time okay so let's make a bit more uh, maybe of the positional analysis so we have a good king uh good center we are not behind the development um but we are maybe just losing a lot of pieces here okay wow they play a really timid move here not capturing any of our things um but okay maybe they don't need to um, so how can we proceed from here what could we do here how can we get some of these guys into the game or maybe this knight here How about a fun little move like pawn to h4? Bishop takes pawn knight here, attacking the bishop. Bishop moves or is defended, then we have a good knight here. Then we maybe even just take the bishop in order to lure the queen here. I think we will try that. Uh, just, uh, we're just having a good time. Uh, wow, okay. They don't go for any.
any of that, but instead they play f5. Now there is a move that according to uh, internet meme culture is forced. And that move is Alpesang. And I must say it's pretty tempting here. Um, so I think I will capture this song. So let's say pawn takes pawn, knight takes. Or how about knight here? I, I don't think that works. That would be so cool though. But let's say pawn takes, knight takes, then just bishop takes is the problem. Um, so I think we will capture like that. And they capture with the knight. That makes a lot of sense. Um, and I think we just drop the bishop back, like so. And uh, I don't really know. I think this pawn is pretty weak. Okay, they they capture like that. So they are actually allowing us, unless they're missing something. They are allowing us to come in and pressure the pawn. Um, There could also be moves like bishop takes on h6 as a sacrifice, because now queen anywhere on this diagonal, on the long dark diagonal, would be check. Um, so it's not good just yet, but it's it's getting pretty close. And, um, yeah, knight e5 uh, would also be great with threats like knight f7 check, forking the king and queen, forcing rook takes knight, winning the exchange. So that's something I will have in mind. I think in general probably 95 is going to be a, a nice move to have in the bank. Um, maybe we will see bishop takes this pawn. That could be something. So I don't think we would recapture with the knight. Queen takes, we are sort of just helping black improve their position there. So this is basically a gambit we are playing. We are now still gambiting this pawn. Um, because if pawn takes, uh, if, if bishop takes pawn, uh, knight takes, queen takes, there will just be a queen that is more active, can both be a, an attacking piece against my king, 
and the defensive piece um, defending these squares here towards the king so um, and as soon as this bishop moves and one thing I don't like about queen takes this pawn is bishop uh, back to c8 chasing the queen away um, where we wouldn't have necessarily a very strong follow-up although I guess we could capture the c pawn uh, unless we are then getting trapped with rook c8 I think we could be getting trapped with rook g8 if it were white's move here queen takes e6 bishop c8 queen takes c6 well of course rook can't go to c8 <laughs> if there is a bishop on c8 so maybe we are not getting trapped okay so maybe it's not so easy to defend this for white we are getting closer on time I think yeah we are so we are only down about a minute and we are still threatening the e6 pawn maybe they will play something like rook, rook to rook to f6 Six. Hmm. Or oh, oh, have they just left the game? I don't think rook f six works. Because after knight e five still threatening to come in with the fork I think the dual threats we have here with either queen takes e6 or indeed knight e5 are a little tough to meet for our opponent so maybe they should try to go for some active counterplay we did see we did see rook to defend well I guess I guess we will just keep on pressing we are defending the bishop twice we are threatening to come where the knight will orient itself to show its intention and uh, yeah I think we have a cool looking position it's not necessarily winning if the material is equal we both lost two pawns and a knight they are now looking inside from the outside as much as to win okay well I, I don't know if he will uh, opponent played in 
interesting little king move. Do we have some amazing trickery here? Maybe, maybe we do, maybe we don't. We can also consider just sitting on the position with a move like pawn to h5, cementing the bishop there. And then if we check here, wait a minute, if we just check here, King, let's say King if King F six Knight check Is that does that do anything though? I'm not sure it does anything, it just looks fancy. So There are also moves like knight g4, attacking the rook, rook moves, bishop takes, pawn takes, knight takes, check. And then knight, knight here, winning the exchange. I think we'll try that. Looking at the rook, looking at the pawn. And um, we don't even have to do the whole sacrifice scheme, to be honest. Um, because now we just have queen takes check. which has to be pretty good. And now it's one of those situations where I'll have to go and input the move. I will have to talk with Danny Wrench about this reason. If you are watching, I don't know why he would, but if you are, Danny, respect, uh, expect an email from me regarding this. So we must be pretty close to winning. Knight takes, pawn takes, bishop takes. takes, pawn takes, wait a minute, bishop takes, bishop takes pawn, pawn takes pawn, queen check, f6 is too well defended, I think, um, what's our time like, three minutes, 
Ähm, Do we want do you want to take with the bishop first or the knight first? Maybe the bishop first because when we have the knight here it has a pretty good threat. So I think we take like so just coming in with everything then after Pawn takes bishop, knight takes bishop, uh, knight takes pawn, then we have knight f7 check as a threat. Um, they do capture. We recapture. So we did give up material, but if you look at these guys, looking straight at the king, straight at the king, straight at the king. So we have three pieces here, and we have a concrete threat already of knight f7. Um, and we could potentially look at moves like one of the rooks on the open file to put more pressure on this bishop. Uh, that would tie this knight down to defending the bishop. Yeah, so this king, it's, uh, we have, uh, do you know, guys know uh, the Danish uh, uh, storyteller H.C. Anderson? Uh, he wrote this, uh, this story that I really love. It's uh, it's called it in, in Danish. It's called Kong's New Clear, the Emperor's New Clothes, and it's about uh, you know nobody, like somebody tricked the king and said, oh only the, only the most noble will be able to see the very special clothes we are making for you, and nobody uh, wants to admit that they are not noble enough to see the fancy clothes, so nobody <laughs> can. Uh, dares uh, say anything when the con king is uh, walking around naked <laughs> until uh, a child yells out, oh, well, the king is naked. <laughs> and uh, yeah, it's just uh, it's just an amazing story. It was written like 150 years ago. And he's just, he's just such a great storyteller. And like, this king has no clothes. Um... Okay, can we finish the game up, check, king moves, hmm, or was it a very strong and resourceful move that my opponent just played, maybe it was, maybe it was. But I like check king here. Then the problem is that we are, it's very tough to avoid the queen, the queen trade. So I, I think I would love to avoid the queen trade. I would love to go to uh, e3, but we have the pesky knight. Um, we could also just put a rook here. Queen takes. Rook takes. Um, queen check. Bishop interposes. Um, and then queen here. Looks good. Okay, so Danny, I will be writing you.
So there is a check. I'm guessing we will see uh, and then here and let's see if we can avoid um, blundering here in, in a little bit of time trouble here down to one minute but we do we do we do we do have an additional uh, 10 seconds being added to our clock for every move we make. And I don't think knight f4 threatening the queen works because knight f7 comes also with a check, so it's a double check, so they can't capture our queen in response. So now they have to, okay, they do play here which I think just ends the game. Um, right, I check, but that is check. Um, not a lot of going on here. I think it's checkmate in a couple of moves. Then, then, uh, I don't think there is any way out of Queen H7, King moves, Queen, Queen F8 mate. Okay, they did this, check. Okay, are we in sync? Can I do this? No, I will have to make the move on the board and I will do so. Okay guys, uh, I had to run back and forth a little bit, um, but that's, you know, we're still working out the kinks, we're still trying to figure out how to best use this technology. And um, yeah, it was a pretty good game. It was a pretty good game. A lot of fun attacking ideas. I hope you liked it. Please uh, drop a comment uh, and tell me if you want more like this. Thanks for watching. I hope I will see you in the